and it's time for part three of my review of this PowerJack 5000 watt pure sine wave inverter. In part one I opened it up and showed the inside and gave my thoughts. In part two we did some repairs and made some modifications. This is part three and we're going to take a look at how this inverter actually performs and form a opinion on whether this is worth purchasing. And over here I have it connected up with two sets of two gauge cabling. I found out that it is necessary to use both of these for it to operate properly. And I have it connected up to two deep cycle batteries. These are fully charged and in good condition. Two batteries is not enough for a 5000 watt inverter. However, I think you'll find out that uh, that doesn't really matter in the case of this inverter. I also have it connected up to this 45 amp battery charger. And you'll just have to take me on confidence here that this setup is adequate to power this inverter. And we're going to be powering a variety of loads. But before we get to that, I first want to take a look at the specifications. And normally I like to take a look at the user manual. However, I don't even know if this comes with the user manual. I didn't get it when I purchased this. So let's go to the website where they are selling this inverter and see what they have to say about it. I found the inverter for sale on eBay. This particular vendor likes to sell their products on eBay. There's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but this is the only specifications that I could really find on it on quick notice here. But it is a 5000 watt pure sine wave inverter, 110 volt version from PowerJack, and you can see that it looks pretty much identical to the one that I have been tinkering with here. So let's take a look at what they say about this inverter. Scroll down here, and these are the specifications. Hopefully you can read them on cameras. It is ideally suitable for journeys, camping, tents, boat trip, working on the way and everywhere, where there is no electricity. Simply connect hour with a 12 volt battery. For example, as in a car, motorcycle, camper, or boat, and use 110 volt electrical appliances. Yeah, you can tell that this isn't written by an English speaker. You would think that they would at least proofread their things, but uh, no. No, they don't. So these are the general specifications. 5,000 watts continuous. I'm confident that's wrong, but we'll prove that. 10,000 watts surge. I am sure that is grossly incorrect and simply a lie, but we'll ignore that for now. Regulation, 5%. I had to adjust mine because it was out of regulation to start with. Efficiency, 87%. We're going to be taking a look at that. No load current draw, 0.8 amps. Pure sine wave. It is pretty pure. I don't have an oscilloscope and I don't have a harmonic power analyzer at the moment, so we'll just take their word on this for now. Temperature protection. I'm not going to test that because I don't trust that it will protect it in time. And the input voltage ranges. I already covered that in my previous video. So let's go down to see what else they have to say about it. Here they tell you how to calculate how many watts your appliance takes. I guess that's interesting. I don't know why they bother telling you that. And here they say that many things have a extremely high short-term starting current. And that is very true. However, they really shouldn't be telling you that in their advertisements here. Because, well, they're probably trying to cover for something in your inverter. And it's interesting and notable that they say right here, Note. If you want to use motor, kettle, pump, TV, air conditioner, refridge, I'm not sure what a refridge is, grinder, washing machine, not over 1500 watts, use the following link, the 3000 watt version of this. Well, are you saying that the 3000 watt version can power more than the 5000 watt version? Yeah, this isn't a, a very reputable company at all. Then they try to advertise their 6000 watt version. But this is what really gets me. They're warning lab Lab, Lably, Warning Lably, I'm, I'm not sure what that is, but they're Warning Lably. Here they have a whole matrix of different appliances, and this here is my inverter, 5000 watts, so we'll look at just this column. They claim that this inverter cannot power a halogen lamp over 50 watts. Are you kidding me? 50 watts? This is a 5000 watt inverter, and I can't power a 50 watt halogen lamp? That doesn't seem right. Flashlight? What kind of flashlight takes 250 watts? What are they talking about? Flashlight? They must be thinking about something else. Circular saw, 1000 watts. They all take more than 1000. That means I can't power any circular saw off of this. 
drill, vacuum cleaner, almost all vacuums take more than 700 watts, and go on down the list, all kinds of things. We're going to be testing a bunch of these things to see if they are true or not. But note that in this column for the 5,000 watt inverter, that the highest rating that they give is 1,200 watts. Hair dryer, not over 12,000 watts, or 1,200 watts rather. So this 5,000 watt inverter they claim can't power anything more than 1,200 watts. I'm not sure if this is just poor translation or what's going on here, but we're going to do some testing because this is pathetic documentation. But they do have a nice picture. Yes, must buy inverter. So let's start the testing because we obviously cannot trust the documentation that is offered with this product. First of all, I will turn it on. And I did connect, disconnect the beeper, by the way, because that was really annoying, so I just got rid of it. This inverter, for some reason, they chose to give you a warning beep. So it beeps every second or so once the voltage gets below 12 and a half volts or something crazy high, which basically means it beeps all the time under load. So I just removed the beeper because that's pretty stupid. In any case, it doesn't beep anymore, but it will shut down if you overload it or give it a improper input voltage, too low voltage, etc. But I have my light bar over here that I constructed, and I don't know how many lights I have on, so let's just turn the switch on. Looks like I have four light bulbs on. And the output voltage is 109 volts. 340 watts. That should be no problem for a 5,000 watt inverter. But once again, I'm only expecting a few thousand watts out of this, two or three thousand based on the internal construction. So I also have this electric heater here. This is a 1500 watt electric heater. And first of all, I'm just going to check and see what kind of voltage regulation, load regulation, this inverter has. I'm going to keep these lights just slightly out of frame so that we can see how much they dim when this heater gets turned on. And I'll just turn the heater on high and off, back and forth and we can see what kind of voltage fluctuation that we get. And almost nothing. So the regulation that way is pretty good on this inverter. That's pretty typical of sine wave inverters. I'm not terribly surprised, but it is good to see. And let's also see what the voltage does when I turn on this 1500 watt load. It doesn't drop a whole lot which is good. If I go to watts, you can see that it's not quite 1500 watts because the voltage is not 120 volts. It is somewhat lower. But I do notice one annoying thing. These light bulbs are flickering. Every couple of seconds they flicker off just very briefly. I'm not sure why it's doing that. This inverter seems to have that habit in my previous testing. It continues running, but I'm not sure why it does that. It's just a low quality inverter and it Apparently it doesn't work perfectly, but it does power this heater and these light bulbs. So let's see what kind of real output power that this inverter has. I'll grab another heater and we'll try to power a bunch more stuff. Let's see if this inverter can power two 1500 watt electric heaters. First of all, I will turn on my light bulbs over here. And I'm going to set this to, uh, let's keep it on volts for now. It starts at about 114, turn the light bulbs on, it sags a bit. I turn this heater on, it sags just a little bit more, and now I'm going to turn this heater on high and see what happens to the voltage. And the voltage sags significantly, down to 100 volts. And that makes the wattage only 2.3 kilowatts on this 5000 watt inverter. And past 100 volts, the inverter really isn't very usable and this inverter is not warmed up yet, it is still cool, so that means that this inverter can only supply about 2,500 watts. One half of what it's rated for. And that is unacceptable. That is pathetic. This inverter is not a 5,000 watt inverter in any sense of the word. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it is useless. After all, it is a low cost inverter. So let's see what it actually can power because perhaps it can power a lot of things that make it quite useful. This is a microwave oven. It is a 11, 1100 watt, I think, microwave oven. I have it plugged into the inverter here, and I'm going to put a glass of water in it and see if this microwave works. According to the warning lably, 
it cannot power this microwave. I also have 400 watts of light bulbs going on in the background. So let's see if this microwave runs. Yes. Yes, it does run. It seems to run perfectly. Let's take a look at the watt meter. The watt meter shows it has sagged 208 volts and is pulling 1300 watts. 13 amps. And it works just fine. So, yes, this inverter can power a microwave, even though the warning lably says that it cannot. Alright, let's have some fun with this inverter and see what it can really power. I did a similar test with my Samlex 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter a while back. This one does have better batteries, but again, that's not the limiting factor here. The inverter upstairs is plugged into this power strip here. You can see by the light that the inverter is currently running, there is nothing on the inverter right now except this power strip and power meter. And we're going to see if it can start and run some of these different appliances. First of all, I have a 500 watt halogen work lamp just off frame here. And I'm going to plug that one in. Well, what do you know? It can power more than 50 watts of halogen lights. I don't know why that warning lab lead said that it couldn't do that. I obviously can. So I'm going to leave this running in the background while we try a few other appliances. I have used this ancient 1980s dehumidifier a number of times because this has a very wicked startup surge and most 3000 watt inverters actually cannot power this, this uh, dehumidifier. So this is turned on and we are going to see if this dehumidifier can be powered by this inverter. Hopefully it can. It should be. It's a 5000 watt inverter, but we'll see. And yes! It starts right up, and it runs just fine. So, that's very good to see. And because it's pure sine, this will run far more efficiently than it would off of a modified sine wave equivalent. And next, I have this 13 amp air compressor. Yes, it doesn't look impressive. The tank is rather small, but don't let that feel fool you because this compressor is a 13 amp motor and it has about 5 CFM of flow rate and it takes a lot of power to run. This is very difficult to power, even more so than the dehumidifier, and very few 3000 watt inverters can power this appliance. We'll see if this 5000 watt one can. And we'll see how much this light dims in the meantime. Obviously it powers this compressor just fine. Not an issue whatsoever. So let's try something that's really brutal for an inverter. I have this air compressor here. We will power the air compressor. And I also have here a 13 amp circular saw. Can it power both at the same time? A lot of contractors might want to do something like this. Let's see how it handles it. I also have a 500 watt halogen work lamp running in the background, remember. I would not be surprised if it shut down, but let's just see what happens. And this time it couldn't power it. Let me quick run upstairs and make sure the inverter isn't smoking or something. Well, I'm happy to say that the inverter is just fine. It shut down due to overload, so not a real issue. Apparently that air compressor is right on the limit, running the air compressor and this light at the same time. So it could barely start it up. It did the first time, it did not the second time. So let's try a different test. This time I have a shop vac. We'll power the shop vac and see if the saw can run at the same time. shop vac, 13 amp circular saw. That's not bad at all. This inverter really does pretty well for a really cheap inverter. Alright, and the last thing I'm going to do here is, just for fun, I have my air compressor and this dehumidifier. Both plugged into this power strip. The power strip is turned off, and we are going to see if the inverter can start both of them at once, which is really impressive for an inverter. This 3000 watt Samlex was able to do it. I doubt this, this uh, Power jack one will, but let's at least give it a fair shot and see if it can. 
And also, before I flip the switch, I'm going to run upstairs and put a clamp meter on this thing to see what the peak amperage draw really is of it. That'll give us a good idea of what the surge capability is of this inverter. Alright, they're both plugged in. I have the clamp meter on it. And the halogen light is off, so it's just powering these two appliances. Almost. Almost. And that's not too bad. Let's quick run upstairs and see what the peak surge was. Here's the inverter shut down because of overcurrent. And if I take a look at my clamp meter, it is overloaded. This is a 400 amp clamp meter, so apparently it was more than 400 amps. Now I did some testing earlier before I started recording with this inverter, and its surge capability is not greater than 5000 watts, so I think it was barely overloaded in this case, but as you could tell from the previous testing, the surge capability is pretty decent. It can power more things than a typical 3000 watt inverter can, and overall I'm reasonably impressed with it so far. But there are more tests yet to do, so let's take a look at the efficiency of this inverter and see how efficient it is. Now I've done videos before on measuring efficiency, so I'm not going to show the process, I'm just going to do it and show you the results. And here are the results of my efficiency test. In a word, it's bad. Really bad. This is the wattage, and this is the efficiency at that wattage. You can see that the efficiency never gets above around 75%. And then it starts falling again. This is running my refrigerator. Efficiency is 71%. I just did that for a different power factor check. But in any case, the efficiency of this inverter is between 70 and 80%. It is quite low. They claim 87% in their ad spec. That is just an outright lie. It's nowhere near that. And it's very inefficient. Now, if you're powering a lot of watts, in this case, 1500 watts is what I'll use as a test load, this is going to be dissipating at 75% efficiency 500 watts of heat. Now, in this case, can this really dissipate 500 watts of heat? Maybe this thing can start heavy loads and it can power them, but it can't power them for long before it overheats. So I'm going to do a longer term stress test. I'm just going to have this inverter here, put a 500, uh, 1500 watt electric heater on it, and see what happens to it. Does it get really hot or what happens? And here we go. 1500 watt electric heater. First of all, I'm going to plug in my 400 watts of incandescent light. That'll just give me an indicator to let me know that the inverter is still running and I will plug in this heater into the other outlet and turn it on high. And that'll be about uh, a little over 1500 watts. Remember that the output voltage sags. And I'm gonna let it run this way for a while. In the meantime, I wanna see how many amps that this is drawing. So I'm gonna set it to DC amps and clamp it around both of the positive cables that I measure both of them. And you can see that it's drawing around 190 amps. So I'll let it run this way for a while and we'll see what happens to it. I added this power strip so that I could see what the voltage sag was as it warmed up. We're drawing about 1,650 watts. That should be no problem for a 5,000 watt inverter. And the voltage has sagged only a little bit, which is no problem. The fan in here has turned on and it is extremely quiet, but that's because I put in a very high quality fan. The one that it initially had wasn't nearly this quiet. It does blow a good amount of air, and the air coming out is quite warm already, which is not a good sign. If I feel the outside of the inverter, it's already too hot to touch. It's only been about one minute. This is on Celsius, and you can see that it is already up around 50 degrees Celsius on the outside. That means that the FETs are even hotter. The other side of this inverter is very similar. The output stage is on top. That's not nearly as hot, so the input stage is what's getting quite warm. And even at the 1600 watt level, if I just hold this meter here, you can probably watch it increase. 46, 46 and a half, and it just shut off. Why did it shut off? My fuses didn't blow, it just decided to shut off. My input voltage, as measured at the input terminals, is 13.5 volts. Let me power cycle this thing. Perhaps it already overheated. So everything's running again. 
you can see the input voltage, 12 point, uh, about 12 volts, and it shut off again. So this inverter has already overheated after running for just a few minutes at 1500 watts. That's not good. So it can power those heavy loads that I ran in the basement, but it can't do it for very long. That's not very acceptable for a 5,000 watt inverter, I must say. So let's give it a little bit of an easier time. I unplug the lights. I'll turn the inverter on. And just power the heater. And you can see that the heater is drawing, oh, 1,300 watts or so. It'll drop a little bit over time. And uh, the input voltage is, once again, well over 12 volts, as measured at the inverter input terminals. So let's see if it can handle this 1300 watt load for a little bit before it overheats this time. The inverter had a little bit of a chance to cool down. The fan blows quite a bit of air. It blows about as much as the original fan did, as far as I can tell. But. Uh, this inverter is just so inefficient that it can't cool itself properly. I will let this run for a while and let you know how it turns out. Well, it only ran for about five minutes and then it overheated and shut down. So I now have it running at 800 watts and we'll see what it can do at 800 watts. Hopefully it can do this continuously. I mean, a 5,000 watt inverter that can't do 1,000 watts continuous, really? I'll see what happens at 800 watts. And it just shut down, but that could be because I didn't let it cool off enough. I'll let it cool off for a little bit and try 800 watts again. It is currently running at 800 watts into a resistive load. And in case you were wondering where it measures the temperature, it measures it right here. On this screw, there is a thermal measuring device, a uh, thermistor. And that goes to the control board, and that's where it measures temperature. And yes, it's quite hot. In fact, it is uh, 40 Celsius, approximately. It gets hotter as we go over here, but in any case, let's see if it can handle an 800 watt load continuously. And yes, this power jack converter does appear to be able to power a 800 watt load continuously, which it should easily be able to do, given that it says 5,000 watts in big text. But it cannot do more than 1,000 watts continuous, and I consider that unacceptable. So, the PowerJack 5000 watt pure sine wave inverter. What are my thoughts and would I recommend it? Well, if you watch this entire review, I'm sure you can form your own opinions, but personally, I would not recommend this inverter. It depends on the application, but still, I can't really recommend it. This can power some pretty impressive loads for its price point. However, it is not a 5000 watt inverter. It's not a 5000 watt inverter. This is really about a 3000 watt inverter. It can power some loads that most other 3000 watt inverters cannot power. However, it can't power them very long before it overheats and quits working. Then you have to let it cool off and then you can turn it back on again. Not acceptable. This inverter is so inefficient that it overheats almost immediately on any load that's over 2000 watts. And if you try to power anything that's over 1000 watts continuously, it overheats and you have to wait. Now, maybe if it's very cold outside, this inverter could work okay for you, but I really can't recommend it because it's just so poorly designed. If you can find one of these for a low price and you only have intermittent loads to power, maybe you have a work truck and you just want to run a few power tools every once in a while, then yeah, you could probably use this inverter and it'd probably work out okay for you, but there's other alternatives too. You don't need pure sign for most power tools, but if you have an application where a pure sine wave inverter is needed that does not need to operate continuously and you don't want to spend a lot on the inverter yet you want to run some loads that are very difficult to start then this could be a good choice for you. However, those are a lot of ifs, if, 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 and really there's not a lot of applications where I would recommend this. So I do not recommend this inverter, but you can form your own opinions. So thanks for watching.